Hello everyone, today I will go over how to use the ESP32 device with Rust. ESP32s are great because they run at very high clock speeds, uh, they have quite a bit of RAM and quite a bit of flash for microcontrollers, and they also have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth available out of the box, uh, which, which is awesome. Uh, further on, if you look at number of pins, they have a lot of pins and a lot of functionalities for things like PWM, UART, uh, I2C, unlock to digital conversions, touch controls, everything we need. Uh, realistically, the only annoyance is that they run on the Xtense architecture. So uh, this means this architecture is generally not supported by default compilers. And uh, to use it, you often need to use a fork of a compiler, which is C or Clang. And Expressive does help with this. They provide uh, their own ESP IDF, which is an acronym for Expressive Internet of Things Development Framework. And this is a compiler and any SDK is required to compile things and run things on their board. Espressive also provides uh, some help for Rust programs, which we'll go through. So I have my board plugged in and ready to go. So let's go through how I would go about trying to run things on these microcontrollers. The first thing that I would do is probably is just search ESP32 Rust. And there is a guide, which pretty much is in text what I'm gonna go through in this video. And then uh, I can already see the Rust ESP32 example. So uh, let's go through it. And uh, reading through the text, eventually it says this is awesome because it gives me a podman command or a docker command. Uh, generally, these are virtual machines with everything set up. So what I would expect is I run this podman uh, example and I should be able to flash it. My general approach to running on boards is flash examples first and then if they run, then adapt them and then I can start changing. But first I want to make sure that I can flash an example without me doing any changes. So uh, let's try this. I will paste this command and I will skip over TTYUSB1 because uh, my device is uh, plugged in TTYUSB0. And for information how I know this, I do ls dev TTYUSB star and I know I only have a USB0. So anyway, I have the, pro, uh, the podman running and it tells me that I need to go into this directory. Great. And it tells me that I should compile and notice that because we are using a fork, it will tell me I have to use the ESP fork. You can also set a default for this, so you don't need to specify each time. For now, I'll just say compile and it will go. This takes a while because the system is big, it compiles the entire IDF, uh, but the video will be sped up so you don't have to wait so much. Great, completion finished. It took a bit over one minute, so it takes a while. And the next step, uh, let's uh, cat uh, the message of the day. It's the thing that appears when I log in and gives all examples. So it says I should be able to flash. And uh, when I try to flash, it will say uh, it's not found. Fine, uh, let's install it. So this is an error. It tells me that I need a more recent uh, Rust-C. Apparently this image ships with 1.58, but uh, the latest ESP flash uh, needs 1.59. I could upgrade Rust-C and uh, I went through that path, but realistically what I assume is whenever such an image and a demo is built, it was probably working at some point. So my guess is just that the version that I'm trying to install is way too new. So uh, what I would do, I would go to crates.io and find all the versions for ESP Flash. And I can see that the latest is 1.5 point something, and there were previous versions. So just, let us go one kind of uh, secondary version down. So let's try to install 1.4.1. This still fails to compile, uh, and uh, at this point I, I'm getting closer, uh, so I will see what is the error. It says package config not found and the libs are not here. Uh, so package config is a program that helps you uh, build with uh, secondary libraries regardless how they are installed because it's, it's supposed to provide you with information about the specific library, like what uh, C flags and what uh, library to link in. And in this case I can see that it's searching uh, USB development drivers, which makes sense because the device is connected through USB. And uh, the first thing, if I try to run the same command, it says package config not found. Uh, so I guess I have to install it. it apparently it cannot find it uh, because my system is not updated for the image to be smaller. I guess all the updates are have been deleted. So let's update it. Now I can install package config. I had a typo apparently. Package config is installed 
And at this point, I try to run it again, and it says that leap view dev is, does not exist. Let's look for it. I assume that the development libraries are needed, so I will pick to install these. And now let's try again. The command doesn't uh, give me an error, so this means I should be able to install ESP Flash at this point. ESP Flash is installed. Int exists. So let's find the flashing command again. And I will attempt to flash it. I also know that ESP Flash uh, supports a monitor argument, uh, so I see that the flash uh, succeeded. So I will pass in that as well. Let's see. And it gives me that uh, dev TTI USB not found. Uh, as I understand it, these are more recent ESP Flash versions because they try to see what kind of USB device and what are the properties uh, since it's connected to the system. However, I run on a virtual machine. So the only thing that I have a link, I have the link to the device file, but apparently that's insufficient. We could try to fix it or maybe debug it, but for now I, I'm still going through the assumption that one of these versions works. So uh, I started downgrading kind of bisecting and for me version 1.2.0 worked. So I will go ahead and install that instead. And if I install this, I'm not even sure if I will need the package config and uh, udev, but it doesn't hurt. ESP Flash 1.2.0 was uh, replaced uh, and it replaced version 1.4.1. So if I run my nice version, it tells me I'm running 1.2.0 and let's try again the flashing. It says connecting, I'll press the reset button. The reset button was not enough. Uh, so I'll keep holding the boot button. I'll press reset and it's flashing. This finished flashing and you can see that I, I see output from the monitory command. So I assume everything is working and everything was flashed. It is trying to connect to a Wi-Fi that doesn't really exist because I kept the default and my Wi-Fi is different, but that's fine. I know how to flash a device and uh, this works well. The next step would be to figure out how I compile everything on my local machine because I want to have an ID, I want to have uh, autocomplete. So rather than using a virtual machine, and do my compilation there, I would like to install the tools locally. And remember, I need to install a fork of LLVM for me to compile for ESP32. So I know that previously I compiled this ESP32 STD demo. So let's go to uh, GitHub and view instructions for that demo. And the instructions tell me that I should install the Espressive toolchain and then I can switch and compile everything. So let's do that and figure out how I can compile the Espressive toolchain. The command is fairly easy. I already ran this on my system, so I'll run this on a fresh virtual machine to see how I go through uh, debugging any errors and uh, making everything go. So I will uh, do podman. I will run just a Rust virtual machine. I'll create a separate directory and run the command to install the toolchain. This took a while. Uh, the important bit to remember is that we have to switch defaults. So this script will give me some paths that ask me to uh, add to bash RC. So I will do that. I placed all the paths in the bash RC and I will have to uh, preload it. Now my defaults are changed. So uh, let's see the Rust C version. It is 1.59, so it looks like the latest. Let's try to compile something. And for compilation, I'm guessing since I used this example, let's try to see if I can compile the Rust STD example. So let, uh, let's git clone it and try to compile it. It tells me that uh, installation fails, so let's try to debug it and see what went wrong. It tells me that no module named pip is installed. Well, that's uh, strange. Usually Python comes with pip, but let's find it. I'm searching for pip for Python 3. And let's install it. 
Now that pip is installed, let's try recompiling. Compilation all finished, but it tells me I need some environment variables. Uh, fine, I will define them. We could also edit the code, but this is easier. I just want something to compile to make sure my compiled environment is good. It finally compiled. So great, uh, we know how to set up a system so that I can compile for uh, ESP32. You can do this on your own system. I already did this on mine, so from now on I won't be using a virtual machine anymore. Finally, the next step would be, let me try to write a Blinky demo. And the way I go about it is, is there any template that would help me uh, building just empty applications? And the one that exists, it's also supported by Espressive from Espressive RS. It's called ESPIDF template. So I could generate a brand new project and I will type in everything. I will not type in the final cargo so you can see why this cargo exists there. And it will ask me what kind of template should I do? Do I want to compile with cargo or do I want to compile with snake? I, I want cargo. I like that uh, standard Rust compilers. It's good. Let's call it Blinky. And I want to use ESP, the latest version for an ESP32. Notice that STD support was set to true. So I will have the full STD capability because uh, STD sits on top of uh, ESP IDF. And uh, the MCU is big enough that it supports an STD environment, which is quite neat. I, I get heap, I get threads and uh, other bits. I think everything is based on FreeRTOS. Next step, I try to make Sublime Text work for this, uh, but I never got it fully working with autocomplete and everything. So uh, I will be using uh, Visual Studio Development uh, VS Code right now. Let's run code in the current directory and see what we got. And I got a main.rs that prints hello world. Let's try to compile it and flash it. It compiled, uh, but it told me a similar error, like eventually it failed. Let's figure out why. It says it cannot install ESP IDF. This is strange. Previously it ran. I will just uh, run it again in case there's a temporary GitHub failure. It failed a second time. So what I'm wondering right now is if I have the override set. Uh, so let me uh, rerun the paths that are, were being suggested after installing the Rust ESP environment. And once I source those paths, I will retry to run. This finished compiling and also see Visual Studio code telling me that Rust Analyzer failed to load. So my guess is that the paths are still wrong when I started code. So let me exit it and start it again after the environment variables have been loaded. I think Rust Analyzer will take a bit to load, but I see it's in this thing, so everything should be uh, good. So now let's see if I built anything. I expect something should exist in target. It exists. And it's uh, 3.6 megabytes. Let's flash it. I think I still need to press the reboot button, so I'm holding one button, press reset, and then letting go. Flashing succeeded and it says hello world. So everything is working. Now let's uh, try to do a blinky. To do a blinky. And uh, I actually tried to get an onboard LED. I think it should be supposed to be on GPIO 2 and I couldn't get it to work. So I uh, plugged in an LED and uh, put it on GPIO 17 and let's try to make that work. So uh, let's blink it 10 times maybe. So when I blink, I have to toggle an LED and I have to uh, sleep. Because we are in an STD environment, a sleep should be easy enough. I can do STD thread sleep. And let's uh, sleep 500 milliseconds. 
The only bit that I don't know yet how to do is a toggle LED. So what I expect is I have to get some peripherals. Once I have the peripherals, I have to get a pin 17. I will want to set it to output. And I have to do the toggle pin. If I look in cargo.toml, I can see I only depend on ESPI DFSYS. Uh, however, to access peripherals and access pins, I will need a hardware abstraction layer. So let's uh, search for that. There's an ESP IDF hull. I picked the latest version. And generally, hardware abstraction layers I use the embedded environment uh, for Rust. Uh, so let's uh, install that one as well. Now that I have the latest versions, uh, let's uh, save everything and uh, let's let Rust Analyzer find the dependencies because I want to autocomplete peripherals. So let's see, let, let peripherals. Rust Analyzer loaded, so let's search for peripherals. Searching for peripherals, the IDF hull uh, looks the correct one. So let's take. Once we have a peripherals, I, I should get the LED. Once I get GPIO 17, by default is it is unused or the use is not, the mode is not set, is not input or output. So let's uh, set it into output because I have to turn it on and off. This returns a result, but I know everything should be okay. So I'll just unwrap it. Now that I have the LED, I just need to toggle it and blink it. So let's do that. Notice that when I use toggle, I have to use something from embedded HAL. Luckily, it is imported. And I want to know if this really works. Maybe my hardware is bad, so I also print a LAN uh, like toggle. Now we have a toggle with a counter. We actually do the toggling and we toggle every half a second. Let's compile and see if this runs. Another thing to notice is that the default example did give a, a overwrite on the Rust toolchain and it tells me the default channel is ESP. So I don't need to provide this plus ESP here. Things compiled, I have a warning about an unused result. Uh, I can update that, sure, to make the warning go away. Let's compile again. It compiled this time very fast and it says it's flashable. Let's try to flash it and see if it blinks. I did not click the buttons fast enough, flashing again. After some attempts of clicking buttons, it finally started flashing. I see the counter in the program and I see the LED blinking. So this means that everything is working. I can write demo programs and this should be a great start. I hope this video was interesting or helpful or both. Have a great day.